Hello everyone and welcome to this first video that will be part of a series about the assembly language. So we are not in a text editor yet. In fact, in this first video we won't be writing any code because we are actually going to introduce some introductory ideas that will be really, really useful when we will actually um, go and do the coding effectively. So in this video in particular we will talk about the uh, binary number system and also the octal and hexadecimal and in general just introduce a little bit of uh, basic computer architecture just a very uh, quick overview in the next video we, we will make maybe uh, go a little bit more in depth so you probably very often uh, heard uh, that computers only understand zeros and ones that's because uh, we are actually and when we work right now with assembly uh, we we're going to be working with digital binary uh, classical computers so there are actually other types of computers which understand a more uh, wide spectrum of uh, values others than uh, other than zeros and ones for example there are ternary computers there are, well, analogical computers, there are quantum computers. So there are like analogical computers, which understand a continuous spectrum of data. Well, then we have quantum computers, which also have a continuous spectrum of data, uh, where we, we don't have bits, we have qubits, which are, uh, these are the elements of the orthonormal base of a one qubit system, for example. Um, we should talk about Hilbert spaces, tensor products, all this sort of stuff when we talk about quantum computers, so we will avoid explaining how they work now, of course. This is just a quick, uh, we could say, quick graph to also introduce some alternative, some alternative computing paradigms. So going back to the main point of discussion. So the question is, how can we communicate with these sort of computers? How do we build um, the applications that we see on our systems? Um, which we are used, which we use pretty much every day in everyday life. So, how do the like desktop GUIs? How do the old fancy GUIs work? How did how does all this stuff work? Um, so, most of the applications, so be it uh, native desktop apps, be it uh, web applications, almost almost all of them they are written with high level languages. Uh, or general programming languages which are humanly uh, intelligible such as uh, well Python C++ Java uh, JavaScript and just JS and C or C sharp Rust all these sort of languages um, and every single one of them has their point of strength and their, and their weaknesses of course and um, each one of them is more useful for a specific use case of course um, also we should have specified that some of them are specifically actually strictly speaking programming languages while others are scripting languages so for now let's ignore this dif distinction let's pick just one of them that of the list we we, we we took and that is the C programming language so the C programming language which it's called could look something like I don't know maybe let's write a basic line of code in C like a hello world program we're just gonna write hello so and here like include this standard so if we have like a basic example of code in C uh, that is a humanly intelligible language which we can give instructions to the computer then how does this gets get translated into zeros and ones how does this work so like what wh what is in between these two things well it is actually not just one thing it's actually quite a lot of things that separate this code here to these uh to these binary code that is actually just electrodynamic signals um and these things, now we are going to answer this question. So what is in between? So, so we will now introduce the concept of compiler. So 
I'm sure you're already familiar if you ever coded with C with the concept of compiler and I'm sure and I'm also pretty sure one of the compilers you've worked the most with is probably GCC. So let's take GCC as an example. So how does the C code get actually compiled into uh, machine code? So it doesn't just get translated directly into the zeros and ones that your specific computer understands because we also have to keep in mind that the machine code the actually binary machine code is dependent on the architecture of your computer so it's strictly dependent on the hardware my machine code could not be the same as yours and actually you will see that this is true for assembly as well in fact we have many dialects of assembly we have arm assembly we have x86 we have mips we have a lot of could say instruction sets so when we talk about assembly really we don't mean one language like we mean with C. Uh, actually, also with C, we should specify like the C99 or whatever, but you know, like C is a language. Ignoring these like subtleties, when you talk about C, we talk about a unambiguously about the language. When we talk about assembly, we really mean a family of languages, uh, a family of instruction sets of the same language, we could say. So, back to, the to how the compiler works. So, a compiler. It's built of many parts actually. There's a lexer, there's a parser, and then there's actually uh, what translates the abstract syntax tree into actually assembly instructions. But we won't really go in depth uh, about how these things work because it's a little bit out of the scope. All you need to do to, to know is that what happens is our C code, when it gets compiled, it, get, it gets translated into an intermediate assembly code. So we get that, um, let's get translated to assembly. And then our assembly code that is generated by our C code is then translated to binary by the assembler. So, and this is done by the assembler. So this is kind of like the tool chain, uh, the way in which we can imagine uh, the compilation process going on roughly of course because there here we could uh, unwrap this and go a lot a lot into detail there's a lot of stuff that's going on between here and it's like um in between the production yes of of a binary from a source code not only just like lexing parsing all this sort of stuff there's also linking and a lot of process that in this first video we won't cover like that much in detail so now that we have talked about this um we now a little bit understand where assembly stands in the, uh, we could say, in, in, in this kind of hierarchy of languages. So assembly is just one level of abstraction above the machine code that our machine understands. And abstraction is really the keyword here, and it's actually one of the most important concepts of computer science. In fact, actually, we, we, we could technically not stop at binary as a level of abstraction. We could ask, well, why do we use binary? And our answer is digital electronics. Or we could say, it's not really like an answer, it's just we can go a little bit below, we could see how actually, the, how the computers work actually with this binary data. Why do computers act only understand zeros and ones? Our uh, answer would be digital electronics. But then, we would actually go in the world of electronics. Uh, if we wanted to dig deeper into how into how they work, but then we would inevitably end up in the field of classical electrodynamics. That would mean that Maxwell's laws and Lorentz force law, and like all these results and mathematical models. So really we, we, we could technically uh, never stop in our unveiling these layers of abstraction so let's not go too deep for now we will be satisfied with this level we could say of abstraction that we had in our explanation for now and so now that we have introduced a little bit what assembly is uh, so assembly is basically this uh, language that stands in between compile languages and uh, the language that our computer speaks. We explained briefly what an assembler is, what we could say in a very rough manner, 
thing that translates the assembly code into binary. We talked a, bit, a, little, a little bit about um, well these layers of abstraction and now let's actually go over the number system that the computer uses and that is binary. So when we work with numbers we are all familiar with the base 10 number system that and for example I'm going to write some numbers in base 10 that is 341 or 101 or 22 and we're used to counting in base 10 uh, there's a lot of hypotheses for why that would be the case uh, some people suggest that it's because of the number of our uh, fingers that is exactly equal to 10 and that could have been an anatomical factor for the development of such a number system um, however some old societies also employed other use uh, other base systems for counting so there's really a lot of it's really open to debate why we use uh, um, the decimal uh, number system however certainly a big factor in certainly the number of our fingers so but if we have to unveil it uh, how do we actually write this number so for example if we have 341 how, how do we actually write it well we have like for example in this case we have three places so the first one is given by a number between 0 and 9 multiplied by the power of 10 raised to the exponent of the place where it's placed so for example in this case we have 1 this will be 1 times 10 to the 0 then in the second spot which we will mark with 1 so the spot 1 we will start counting from 0 and we will get if you're used to programming you're already used to starting counting from 0 unless you use Pascal but like in C and Python you always start from 0 so in this second spot we have 4 so we say 4 times 10 to the 1 and in the third spot which is 2 marked with 2 we have 3 times 10 to the, sec to the second power so this is how we write um, numbers in base 10 actually and this is the base system that we use with working. We know a little bit of algorithms to like sum the algorithms like with carry and this is like the um, like the, the addition system that we all learn in elementary school and also multiplication stuff like that. Uh, well, it turns out we can also write numbers using instead of um, digits between zero and nine multiplied by powers of 10 so by 10 raised to, to, to n uh, to some natural n we actually write numbers as with digits that go from zero dot dot, dot up to we could say m minus one raised to the m power so to m to the n where n is a natural number and this opens uh, the door to basically the expression of numbers in base m systems. So one pretty important expansion in the base m system where m is, an in, is a positive integer, in this case, is the binary system. And we're going to explore the system exactly here. So binary system is just base 2. So writing numbers in base 2. And now is this done? Well, look at here. We had, we could have digits from 0 to 9 multiplied by powers of 10. So what we will have in base 2, we'll have digits that come from this set here, so from 0 or 1, multiplied by 2 to the n. And so, and the way we represent the digit that is multiplied by the 2 to, to the, by the nth power of 2 is the same way in which we represented it in the decimal system, meaning we will take, in particular, we will take the nth spot uh, of course starting to count from 0 to the right so let's give an example because it's really easier to explain this with examples so if we have the number 1011 what will this be in base 2 well it's nothing but this part here is 0 and we have 1 times 2 to the 0 then the spot the spot here is 1 so we have plus 1 times 2 to the 1 then this spot here is 2 then we have 0 times 2 to the 2 squared and this is spot is 3 plus 1 times 2 cubed so if we have to translate this into decimal so this number here in uh, base 2 sometimes and sometimes we will denote numbers in base 2 with this small sub index here 2 and well what is this in base 10 this will be 1 plus 2 plus 8 which is 11 
So this number is 11 in base 2, in base 10, excuse me. So now let's try another one to practice a little bit. So 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. If you want, you can actually pause and try yourself to exercise a little bit, but now we will still be going to do it together. So we have 1 times 2 to the 0. Then we have this here. Uh, it's the first part. So 1 times 2 squared, all plus... Well, this is the third spot, the spot for 2 cubed, this is the spot for 2 to the 4th, so we skip to the spot for 2 to the 5th, and we have plus 1 times 2 to the 5th, and then plus 1 times 2 to the 6th power. And what this will be is 1 plus 4 plus 2 to the 5th uh, to the fifth power is uh, 32, and then to the 6th power is 64. So this should be 69 plus 32, which is 101. So now we have learned how to convert binary numbers from binary to decimal. So let's write here, binary to decimal. So how can we do the other way around? So how can we convert, so now we have a question, from decimal to binary? Well. It turns out it's pretty simple. We will do this via uh, repeated divisions of the number. So suppose we want to divide, for example, we want to represent 242 in binary. So how would we proceed? So we would write this small table here. So we have 242 here, our number. And then we have two here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide uh, repeatedly and report the quotient on the left and the uh, remainder on the right. So let's try here. So let's divide by two. The first division yields 121 with a remainder of zero. So remainder zero, we're gonna say here. Then let's divide it again. So what we will get, we will get a remainder of one with a uh, quotient of 60. Let's divide again. What we get is 30 with a remainder of 0. Dividing again, we get 15 with a remainder of 0. Divided again, we get 7 with a remainder of 1. And then dividing yet again, we get 3 with a remainder of 1. And again, we get, we get 1 with a remainder of 1. And we stop here. So now we write our number in the following way. We're going to write it as the uh, starting from the left. So from the left, starting with the last quotient, then the last remainder, and then going up these remainder columns, like this. So let's give this an example so you can understand. So this will be 1, 1, 1, 1, then 0, 0, 1, 0. So let's check that now this is actually 242. So this will be 2 plus, and now I'm going to skip all the like considerations about the places uh, because it's a little bit how I think we are familiar with the system a little bit more. And so this is the sum of 2 plus 2 to the 4th plus 2 to the 5th plus 2 to the 6th plus 2 to the 7th. So let's calculate this. Start to read the higher. So 2. Oops, okay. So it's 2 plus uh, 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128. So summing all of these things, we get 130 uh, plus 112. And what this is, this is precisely 242. So we have gotten our number back. So we have uh, translated it into binary successfully. So now the next exercise, you can try and convert from decimal to binary the following numbers. In particular, 141, um, 511, 67, 64, and 55. So this will be give a little bit of practice. So now it turns out there's not only the binary number system, as mentioned above, there's actually many other systems. Now we're gonna introduce just briefly the octal system. And then uh, I think you, you have enough examples to understand how in general you could extend this to uh, a general base n. So the octal system just works as follows. So a number in octal system is just represented as a string, second so concatenation of digits, digits, 
that come from the following set so from 0 1 6 uh, from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so up from 0 up to 7 placed uh, one next to another so we have the like the n the n minus 1 dot 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 up to the 2 the 1 the 0 and what this will be it will be given by the 0 times a, a to the 0 plus the 1 times a to the 1 plus dot 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 up to the n times a to the n where here of course the i is in this set here that we call i uh, for i between n and 0 so this is completely analogous to the representation we saw for base 10 and base 2 and <clears throat> the conversion is again the same if you want to convert for example the following number and here we're going to specify with a uh, sub index that we we're talking about base 8 because it will be a little bit more difficult to tell the difference uh, if we just write it in plain text like this for example if we have like 6544 six, in base 8 so what this will be in uh, base 10 this in base 10 will be 4 times 8 to the 0 so 4 plus 4 times 8 plus 5 times 8 squared plus 6 times 8 to the cubed and now uh, the result of this computation is 3428 so again, the conversion is really the same. As an exercise, you can try and convert the following numbers from binary, uh, excuse me, from octal to decimal. So in particular, seven, 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 then one, two, three, and uh, for example, six, five, four, one. And again, now let's try to do the same thing as before. Let's now try to convert from decimal to octal. So the procedure will be the same as the one we did with binary, but this time the, 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 the successive divisions will be uh, performed uh, with 8 instead of 2. So let's try. Let's try to convert um, 78 in base 8. So let's see. We will have to divide 78 by 8 and give its remainder. So notice that 78 by 8 as quotient 9 and remainder equal to 6. Now dividing again by 8 gives quotient 1 and remainder equal to 1. And so now we are done. Our number in base 8 is just 1, 6. Oh sorry, uh, 1, 1, 6. Let's test it. So 1, 1, 6 in base 10 is 1 times 8 squared plus 1 times 8 plus 6 which is 64 plus 6 plus 8 which is precisely 78 so the procedure works and again here is an exercise to work with this uh, a little bit which is just pretty much computation uh, you can you can just try and convert 111 from base 10 of course to octal then 653 uh, 21 and like uh, 341 so these numbers here. okay so with this said I think we have uh, given enough information about just as a brief introduction and we talked enough about the number systems that we will use more frequently in the next video we will talk about uh, binary and octal arithmetic and this generalizes pretty easily to other number systems and we're also going to talk about a little bit, we're going to start talking about computer architecture.